Hello, welcome to Adopt Tank Class and thank you for joining this channel uh, to prepare for this uh, next generation exams. I'm using heart failure and giving you all kind of questions that they will give it to you in, in terms of case scenario. This is a long question, um, but this is what you should expect. You just have to be patient as you see these questions. Client present to the emergency room. That's the area that we were going to be working at. So that's the scenario. Um, what is the history? A client with the history of diabetes present to the emergency room at 7 p.m. with what? Fatigue, dyspepsia, shortness of breath, diaphoresis. Client tried uh, omeprazole with no relief of symptoms. Client report prior diagnosis of what? Stable angina. Something should be ringing in your ear. A diabetic patient should not have shortness of breath, diaphoresis, and dyspepsia and fatigue. This is not hypoglycemia. Fatigue, dyspepsia, shortness of breath, and diaphoresis indicate MI. They usually have 84 symptoms of heart attack. So this patient probably is having MI. But let's continue. I give you the past medical history, hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, a surgery, it's right knee surgery. She has no allergies, she smokes. The client smoke two pack per day tobacco on appropriate medication, um, Tylenol, Lansinopril, Metformin, Aspirin, and Atopostatin, appropriate for the uh, medical problem. What is the vitals? Temperature 98, heart rate of 90, blood pressure, and uh, 110 over 70, SAT 98. The lungs were clear, heart rate regular rate and rhythm, abdomen soft, non-tender, non-distended. You should expect all this information. They're going to give it to you. So don't, I'm just trying to train your brain. Just read it and go through quickly, right? At 7.30 p.m., patient was given oxygen, morphine, aspirin, and sublingual um, nitroglycerin is given. Therefore, you know that the patient has MI, but you can make a diagnosis based on that in the history I gave you. But if treated the patient, if told you the patient has MI, what do you have to do? Keep on reading. You keep on seeing where they will take you. Like I said, keep on doing what you have to do. Don't worry about anything. And as you go with the flow of the question, you just answer what they gave you. Okay? So what, what did I say? EKG, ST elevation in anterior leads. This is consistent with MI. So patient has a heart attack. He's been treated for. At 7.45, diagnosis with MI and underwent cardiac catheterization successfully. They, put, they, did, they removed the clot and everything. They've done everything. So patient has a MI, right? Three days later, uh, this is where I want you to focus on. This is where they can lead you. They can give, this is real life. Patient comes in with them and you see something else. Three days later in the hospital, patient became what? Acutely short of breath with crackles in the lung bases, pain through the sputum, and a new S3 mama. A urine output was 40 ml for the last six hours, right? She has JVD, short, systolic blood pressure was 110, and saturation 89 on room air. A bunch of symptoms, shortness of breath, crackles in lung base, pink through the sputum, a new S3, joint output is low, JVD is present, saturation is low, blood pressure 110. What do you think? Based on this, what do you think? I've given you enough diagnosis information to make the next diagnosis. So the next diagnosis is on the next page. So what did the patient become? Which of the following findings the nurse should be concerned about, right? Based on the symptoms we've read, you should select four, and this is plus minus scoring. That means if you pick the wrong answer, I will take one off of you. So you select to select four. If you select three, you get three out of four. If you select four and you get one wrong, you get three out of four. If you select four, and you give two wrong, you get two out of four. If you select five and you give four right, and the one of them is wrong, I will take the four out and you get three. 
because I had to select four. So four. Which of these are you worried about? King Fury Spirit? Yes, we should worry about. This is pulmonary edema. Saturation of 89? Yes, these are signs of pulmonary edema. Blood pressure of this? This is fine. I shouldn't worry about. Crackles in lung base? Yes. New S3? Yes. Patient basically has developed what? Decompensated heart failure after MI. And that happens. If you have heart attack, your heart muscle get weaker, you can develop CHF. So I say select four. So one, two, three, four. If you get two out of this, you just get two out of four. If you get three, you get three out of four. If you go all wrong, you get zero out of four. Okay, so that is for that one. The next anticipated diagnosis is what? Acute decompensated heart failure or pulmonary edema due to what? New S3 or saturation. This is another plus or minus one. So this is acute decompensated heart failure due to new S3. It's not due to pulmonary embolism. So you get two out of two here. You can get one out of two here. It's fine. But that is the way they're going to score you. Plus minus, it means you're going to take a point if you get it wrong. Um, zero, zero plus is usually zero one. That means they're not taking a point. So this is the way they will score this uh, for you. Now, we know now the patient has a heart failure, right? Drag and drop the correct intervention the next you anticipate. This is another zero one. Therefore, if you get it wrong, no point to be deducted. If you get it right, you get a point. So which one you think is appropriate? Correct diagnosis, so you drag this and you put it here. I can drag it. Can make that fancy electronic stuff. Oxygen, yes. Cardiac catheterization, no, we don't drag it. IV fluid, no, we don't do that. BMP, yeah, because you want to know what the electrolyte is because you're going to give them medication. So you got to check the electrolyte, their potassium or their lab work. They have edema, pulmonary edema, you got to. So, and you got to check their daily weight. So this is what is suspected. And then they will need some diuretic to get rid of the fluid. So this is also will be drag here. So you get four out of four here. If you drag four and you get all wrong, you just get zero. I won't deduct any points from you based on the zero one scoring. If you get three out of four, you get three. If you answer four and you go only one, you get one out of four. No, nothing will be deducted from your total mark. Uh, that you score from somewhere else, okay? No, let's continue. Now, like I said, pay attention and just be flexible. Whatever they take you, they will take you up and down. That's what I'm doing. Patient was ready to be discharged home with the following medication. Now, pharmacology, which of the following is paired with the correct side effect the nurse should educate the client about? zero one scoring that means if you get it wrong no you nothing will be deducted if you get it right you get something so furosemide what is the side effect it causes hypokalemia so this is wrong digoxin side effect heart block perfect spinolactone side effect is hyperkalemia perfect lansinopro side effect hyperkalemia perfect Metropolar, side effect, hyperglycemia, yes. So you can get four out of four. Yeah, this is correct one. So that is the correct one that is selected. So you select four. This is no, you shouldn't select one. So this one is appropriate. This is not appropriate. Okay. You see, I'm bringing pharmacology, trying to get you thinking, but just let me take you up and down. Then that is what the exams will be. So pay attention and just follow with it. At discharge, now patient's going home. The nurse provided appropriate teaching. You've seen this question before. Teaching, education, is the same sort of question they provided, but different form. Which of the following statements indicate client understanding of the teaching? Class manuals. That means if you get it wrong, I'll take one point from you. I need to check my course one full minute before taking it. Yeah. Because you're on the joxing, you got to do that. I should transition from laying to standing position slowly. Yeah, because you're on forest mind, you should do that. Yes. 
I will call my PCP if my necklace does not fit anymore. This is tricky. This is angioedema. A necklace does not fit anymore. The neck is getting big. Yes, you should call angioedema because you are in lesionopro. My PCP may have to adjust my metformin dose. Yes, this is also tricky. Metropolar causes hyperglycemia. Therefore, this patient who is diabetic, we need to adjust metformin dose. So this is good. I should avoid too much banana. Yes, she's on, the patient is on furosemide, which causes hypokalemia. It's on lensinopro, causes hyperkalemia, and then spinolactone, which causes hyperkalemia. So in effect, patient will have hyperkalemia in the end uh, because this will balance it out. So you should avoid too much banana, and this is perfect. So this you can get five out of five here. If you made a mistake, they will take one from you. So this is the way to answer that question um, using pharmacology, teaching, and education. Seven days later, the client called the clinic due to what? Weight gain, three pounds. In two days, with leg edema, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. You have to know your signs and symptoms. P and D, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is they get dyspneic. Um, they wake up in the night and they become short of, short, short of breath. That is signs of heart failure. Basically, they have pulmonary edema. So a patient who has a heart failure, they develop pulmonary edema. So he has gained weight gain, three pounds in two days or five pounds in seven days, it's a sign of fluid overloading. So heart failure, we got to see you. The nurse know that client has developed what? Zero one, right answer, you get one point. The wrong answer, you don't get you any point, nothing is deducted. Am I? No. Fluid deficit? No. CHF exacerbation, perfect. Pulmonary edema? No. So this is the right answer. This you've seen it before, but in a different format, you know the same content, it's not changing. The client asks the nurse, if this is left or right at failure. Based on the finding provided, which is expected for each diagnosis, the nurse should provide to the client zero plus one scoring. That means if you made a mistake, we would take one point from you just here. If you don't make a mistake, you get other points. So basically, patients are asking, is this is a heart failure or right heart failure? And these are all the symptoms they provided you. How do you know, based on these symptoms, just put it on the column that is consistent with the either right heart failure or left heart failure. Paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. So the best way is right heart failure is usually systemic problem. And the left is what? pulmonary problem in addition to uh, hypoperfusion, which is what? Urine output is number one. So urine output plus lung problem is a left heart failure. Right heart failure is a systemic problem. So PND is a lung problem. So it goes here. Leg edema is a systemic problem. Go here on the right heart failure. Left low urine output is a forward problem. Hypoperfusion go to left heart failure. Pink fruit is spirum, it's a pulmonary symptom, go to left heart failure. JVD is a systemic problem, go to the right heart failure. CVP, uh, that is increase, um, I'm supposed to put an increase there. CVP, that is increase, go to um, right heart failure, it's a systemic problem. And large spleen is a systemic problem, so that go here. And then you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven points. If you made a mistake, we take one point from you. This is the end of the this video, giving you all kind of information they can give you in heart failure. There's more. They can bring in medication, mechanism of action of medication, the side effect, uh, details of the heart failure. But this is just briefly giving you your brain. If you want to prepare, this is telling you where you should go. Learn your content. Okay, and when they give you a scenario, step back and say, oh, it's the same thing that they're giving me in the form of case form. I just need to bring it and narrow it down. Take care of yourself.
Thank you for watching this video. If you have not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and put your notification on so that I can see, you can get more uh, early videos when I make them. Take care of yourself and have a good day. Keep charging as always. All the best of luck.